Welcome to another very special episode of the Guaranteed Irish Business Podcast, recorded live in the Stella Theatre in Ranala. This week, our guest host, Anna Daly, is joined by a panel of experts to discuss the power of influencer marketing. The Guaranteed Irish Business Podcast, supported by FBD Insurance, Ireland's largest homegrown insurer. Support, it's what we do. Welcome to the Business Podcast Live, the Guaranteed Irish Business Podcast Live, sponsored by FBD Insurance and coming to you from the intimate venue, it has to be said, of the Stella Cinema here in Renla in Dublin. The title of the podcast today is The Power of Influencer Marketing, a fascinating subject, I think you'll all agree. And we have a brilliant panel and I will introduce you to those in a moment. Um, I should say I am Anna Daly. I'm a TV presenter. Um, a broadcaster if you want to make it sound fancier and I'm the founder of a, a lovely ethical clothing brand called Little Bliss so I'd like to think I'm well placed in asking the questions today because there are brands that I work with as an influencer I guess um, when I want to align myself to a certain brand and they kind of reflect my own morals and uh, ethos, I suppose, but also as a, as a Little Bliss business owner, I'm in the position where I can hire influencers and that fascinates me. So I'm invested on a number of levels, I suppose, with this particular subject. It's also changing on a daily basis. I mean, I studied marketing in college. That degree is fairly redundant now, given uh, the digital world. So uh, a fascinating area and a brilliant panel put together by Guaranteed Irish for today. So let me introduce you uh, to, the, to the ladies. Anya Kennedy is the owner of The Smooth Company and we'll find out more about these businesses because I'm conscious that I know about them but you know we'll, we'll pair it right back to basics um, for anyone who isn't aware of the brands. Uh, Kleena Dowling is the marketing manager for Seabody. You're very welcome Kleena. And Lynn Hunter is the founder of the Collaborations Agency. So in Anya and Kleena's case, you use influencers to build your brand. And an interesting twist with Lynn is that she is the influencer world. It is her business. So uh, lots of different insights here today. So if I come to you first, Anya, you might give me a sense of what the Smooth Company is. I feel like I probably need it right now. <laughs> Yeah, so I launched my business, The Smooth Company, in February last year with our first product, which is called The Smooth Stick. The Smooth Stick is a premium hair taming wand designed to tame flyaways and baby hairs without leaving your hair crunchy, greasy or hard like other hair styling products can do. I noticed the gap in the market over two years ago now when I saw a common trend on TikTok and YouTube when I was watching like so many different hair tutorials of girls dipping their toothbrush into gel to like slick their hair back. Mm -hmm. And I personally am so lazy, I hate putting gel or hairspray in my hair because then I have to wash it out. So I was like, there has to be an easier solution to this. So then at the time I was working for Tan Organic, which is a small Irish business, I'm sure a lot of people have known it. Mm -hmm. um, and during my time in Tan Organic, we launched Vegan Tan. So I knew the backside of how we launch a brand and I studied entrepreneurship in college so it was something that I always wanted to do so it took two years when I was in my last job I was like reaching out to suppliers on the side until we got a formula that we're happy with um, and since we launched last February we now have sold thousands of smooth sticks all over the world so we've customers in over 44 countries around the world as far as Chile and Peru which is crazy and uh, we have over 52 million views on TikTok and we launched in Brown Thomas and Iron it's just before Christmas where we sold out in four days. Jeez, I can't cope. So, yeah. <laughs> I know. I can that's, say I, I say the fish so often. Yeah, I know. I literally think I say it in my sleep now because I say it so often. <laughs> it just rolls off yeah. the tongue. Yeah. Did this product not exist? Any variation? No, of it? there there was different variations of it on the market, but nothing with the like. I knew we could do it better with better ingredients that were better for your hair. Um, and I knew we could make our stand out from the crowd. Brilliant. So yeah, we were going up against some like big names, and I think I suppose I knew when I started this that like we don't have the big marketing budgets like the likes of L'Oreal and stuff have so I was like how do we do it different from every other brand out there and I suppose what I did then is I documented the business journey on TikTok and then off the back of that then we've had so many influencers follow our journey and that's kind of how it kind of went from there. Okay I have loads of questions to <laughs> ask you but I'll introduce the rest of the panel and then we'll circle back as they say. Um, I'm really jealous that you got to do entrepreneurship as a degree because when I finished school I would have loved to see that as an option 
well, when I finished, I went on to do marketing and it was like marketing or arts. Every, if you didn't know what you wanted to do, you went into one of those. Mm -hmm. The fact that that existed yeah, for you, I I'm loved, really jealous. I, I'm like the brand ambassador for that college course now because I loved it so much because it was really project based rather than theory based and I'm much more hands on. Practical. Practical, yeah. So no, I really enjoyed it. Brilliant. Kleena, tell us what is Seabody? So Seabody is a brand that was uh, born from biotechnology in County Kerry. So I suppose it, we had Nutramara, which is a biotech company. And in 2017, it was looking at the sustainable isolation of molecules from seaweed. So a very kind of um, eco-friendly and sustainable way of doing that. Traditionally, seaweed would have been processed using harsh chemicals. We did a, an eco version. So uh, we developed this system where we could isolate these molecules from seaweed. And we were looking at what they did in the lab against human cells. So it was like, okay, these are really exciting ingredients. There's a huge market for these types of ingredients around the world. Um, but in the background, we had a, a brand lab as part of our biotech. And within that brand lab, we looked at how we could develop brands using our molecules um, and really targeted and efficacious products. So we developed Seabody. It was, it was something that was happening kind of in the background of the biotech initially but 2020 changed everything, uh, as it did for many people. So it was definitely the research was going into it, the formulation development, like Anya would have done, um, getting things right, uh, you know, sitting around tables, smelling essential oils, um, you know, trying to come up with uh, how we wanted the products to be perfect. But then 2020 really, really kicked it off, where it was like, okay, Seabody's gonna be something. We know that all of the science is there to back it up. Uh, we've got these amazing molecules. So, We've got a isolated something called Moroderm um, that we've we've isolated that we put into all of the products. Um, that is just an amazing ingredient when you look at it and its functionality in the lab. Um, so it was looking at uh, developing products for people's skincare and supplements. So we look at uh, products that work from the outside in and the inside out. So both. it's both um, both directions. Uh, so the brand was launched in October 2021 into Brown Thomas uh, and Arnott's and since then we've grown uh, our most recently into Kilkenny Design, uh, Macaulay's and Mara's pharmacies as well um, and yeah it's been going from strength to strength. So it is skincare and vitamins, and supplements? Vitamins, supplements, one a day supplements yeah so it's um, I suppose for example we have the movement supplement so we know that the molecule that we've isolated is really good for bones, muscles and joints then we, we wrapped uh, other ingredients around that and developed a movement supplement um, and then with the skincare it's to do with hydration um, collagen uh, elastin production all of that to bolster it and it's just I suppose it's the results that we're hearing about um, and in the lab as well we've done third-party analysis on you know um, hydration over a period of time etc we've gotten results back that we're to, to share very soon that are just incredible. So, Brilliant, yeah. you have the science to back it up. Yeah, and so that's it, it's, it starts with the lab coat, I suppose. Actually, I'm, I will correct that. It starts with the ocean, yeah. starts with the plants that mm. we're on an island. And it's, it's interesting, I saw something we've said before is if you're feeling run down or you've got a sniffle and somebody will say, oh, uh, you should drink orange juice or eat an orange because vitamin, vitamin C. C. Because, yeah. But what is it that's in seaweed? So people will say it's a superfood, but nobody will be able to tell you what's that magic that's in that. And we know that. So we've isolated that magic. Okay. Um, that's the molecule that we have in our range. And it's a blend. It's a complex blend of, of other ingredients, but it's um, it's a little bit of magic. So yeah. Brilliant. Great. Okay, we'll come back to that magic in a few yeah. minutes. Uh, Lynn, I mentioned at the, the top of this, you, your business is influencers. Yep, how many sure influencers is. do you represent <laughs> and how do you divide up the business? Okay, so for starters, we call them content creators. Oh, we okay. don't call them there influencers. You go. No, it's, it's... Is influencer it's a dirty word? Not at no. all. Okay. Uh, it, not at all. Uh, if you are influencing people, you are influencing, yeah. you know, the purchase, like with your fantastic product, which I bought because I saw online, <laughs> yours as well. Um, so, but they are creating content. So that's the difference. Like there is so much work that goes into, you know this from your business, of actually creating that content and editing it down, the sounds, the audio, all that sort of stuff. We had this conversation earlier on. So we represent uh, over uh, 120 people and it's a huge wide range from sports to comedians, 
um, to uh, fashion, lifestyle. There's a whole greater way. We also extremely inclusive, um, all ages, all walks of life. So LGBTQ, uh, transgender, absolutely everything. And we always, I suppose, myself and my wonderful team uh, who are here today, um, we are always on the lookout to see that magic online um, and who we can, you know, really, I suppose my job is to leverage what they've already done, mm -hmm. these phenomenal entrepreneurs like you guys, and really we're there to leverage that for them and to build a strategy for them. How do we get them to the next part? Because they're all entrepreneurs and you can see it, like we've, we've developed brands with some of our content creators for that long-term sort of goal. It's not just their online mm -hmm. content they're actually building side businesses and we've developed brands drinks brands all sorts of stuff so and, it's and really i'll come back to you area. for the case studies of the really yeah. great projects because i yeah. think we're all fascinated with those yeah um when you hear people say well sure anybody could do that you know anyone could just jump online and talk and yeah. build their following there must be something special about the guys who build that following and not only have the numbers, but have the engagement and have brands coming back time and time again to pay them more money to sell their products because it's converting. Yeah. So what makes them stand out? So it's really interesting from the previous panel, what they said, be yourself, be your authentic self. And that is one thing, you either have it or you don't. And yeah. you can't, you, you, you can not not so much teach but encourage it out of people and one thing that when we first started many many years ago i've been doing this a, a long time might look it but i have <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking um but it, uh you know i suppose now TikTok is a completely separate platform whereas before i i have two agencies and uh we would do food content with some of our fmcg brands uh, you know, food, food brands or whatever, and they'd be like, oh, you know, it needs to be so polished. Whereas TikTok is that rawness. It's that authentic and it has to resonate with their audience. And the people who are doing extremely well are being themselves. Like I know that, you know, being authentic, yeah. it has to resonate. And it's that little magic that people really invest in. It's like they're nearly going on their journey with people like your yeah. story. People are so invested in you and they really want to champion you and they really want to, you know, go with you on this phenomenal. Like everyone's an entrepreneur. That's what I always say. It is open to everybody. And it's long as you have that self-belief and yeah. you know where you're going. And that's why agencies come in as a really good support mechanism so they can assist you on that journey, mm -hmm. really. I suppose it's warts and all as well, isn't it? They're the real <laughs> ones. They're the people we buy into. Absolutely. And, I, you know, I think sometimes, you know, some of our guys, they feel, oh, God, am I sharing enough? And I was like, but you don't have to. You can share what you want and you... Yeah. You don't, you know, you can make that decision yourself. So people do have private lives themselves, but you can also share what you want to share. Yeah. But as long as you're being authentic and you're being real. Consumers aren't stupid. And this is what I always say to my brands and to our talent. You know, people can, um, I won't curse, <laughs> but people can, people can sniff out bull. Yeah, of course. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. you know, Waffles. when, exactly. And, you know, you just have to be real and honest. And that's when people engage with you best. Yeah. You know, there's so many case studies where brands have got it wrong or businesses have got it wrong, where they're trying to be something that they're not. Yes. And, you know, going back to, I think it's the theme of today, yeah. just be yourself. Be yourself, yeah. Be absolutely. yourself. Be Anya, speaking of being yourself, um, you have your family members here with you today. Yep, um, Brady Bunch. We could talk about developing the, pro the product forever, and that's probably another podcast. Mm -hmm. But what we want to talk about today, and I just want to keep on brief, is, mm -hmm. is the influencer marketing, mm -hmm. right? So would, would it be fair to say you're not necessarily hiring influencers to promote your product? You're taking your followers on your journey. Yeah, literally, exactly. I knew like in my previous job, I managed 13 brand ambassadors. So I knew that in itself. It's why people like Lynn to help you because it's that in itself is such a big task to yes. do. Um, so I knew at the start, like I wasn't sure how it was going to go. I was like, I just don't have the capacity of the resources of the money to hire loads of brand ambassadors. So I was like, I have to do this for myself and try to build it myself. 
Um, so that's what we did. We literally just started showing behind the scenes of the business. Um, and once one video went viral, people started talking about it. And then we started building a following from there. Um, and I have my granddad who's down there who's the star of the show on TikTok and my sister Hi, Billy. and my dad and, and we all, everyone gets involved in the videos. Um, we showed the good side. See, you're lucky you have a family who'll engage. My yeah. family would all go running if oh, I tried no, to do no, that. No, it, uh, can I say, it took some convincing at the start. Really? It did, yeah. And a few bob. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, everyone, they all love it now. They all love getting involved. Um, but it's a roller coaster. Um, as Lynn said, like we showed the good side, we showed the bad side, we don't show everything going swimmingly or just like the picture perfect things. I think that's why I found actually TikTok easier than Instagram because I'm the least aesthetic person ever. I can't do the real picture perfect Instagram posts where I find TikTok easier because I can just put up the raw, the raw footage and I don't have to think about it too much. And I think that's why it's worked well for us because I'm such an overthinker. With Instagram. Yeah, sometimes if you follow certain influencers, content creators, they, everything is aesthetically beautiful and edited to perfection, yeah. to broadcast yeah. quality almost. Oh, and I love following those people. Me too. I find it very inspiring. Me too, but, but you can personally. see the work that goes yeah. into it. Yeah, oh, it's a huge, huge amount of uh, work goes into it. Um, and the editing and stuff, like it takes so much time, but I knew if I was just literally videoing what I was actually doing that day. I could but there's lots of people videoing, even on TikTok, their journey and the highs and the lows of the stock hasn't arrived and all these kind of things. <laughs> but they're not necessarily going viral. So what's making yours different? Um, oh God, I don't know. I think it's because we weren't trying to copy anyone. We were literally just being ourselves. Um, I mean, if you told me two years ago before I launched the brand, when I launched a beauty brand, that my granddad, my nearly 84-year-old granddad, would basically the face of the brand, you know, on paper, it's, uh, it's a bit random. But I think it works because we're different, you know. Yeah. We're not trying to be like anyone else. We're just trying to be ourselves and stay true to, like, our brand values. Um, and I think, like, even I notice sometimes when we go viral, I notice other brands literally carbon copy the videos we do. And I'm like, well, it's not the same if... For, it doesn't fit your brand. Do you get annoyed about that or do you kind of marvel at it? I kind of get Both. annoyed to be annoyed. honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We All spend right. ages sometimes trying to think of content to do so it's kind of frustrating when you see people just trying to yeah. like rip it off but it comes part and parcel of it. You know, I see content creators and influencers give out about the same thing when other influencers copy them so it's just the nature of it. It's um, the nature of the business. Yeah, and exactly. They're not creating anything ultimately. They're taking inspiration from... Yeah, from I think it's fine to take... I think it's fine to take inspiration but I think you need to make it your own. Yeah. Again, going back to the team today, but I think you just need to, to make, it, make it your own. So apart from uh, documenting the, the, the business journey and including the family, do you use other content creators? Yeah, no, we do. And we try to work with literally content creators from, from all walks of life. We, what we do a lot is gifting. That's huge yeah. for us at the minute. Um, we are lucky because people have seen the brand from TikTok, so they know it. Yeah. Um, that's helped. Or even like I was scrolling on TikTok the other day and this English TikToker was doing an amazing hair trail. I just commented on it being like, oh my God, I love your hair. Didn't think anything of it. And then she replied back and was like, oh my God, I need your smooth stick. I nearly fell off the chair. She had like 300,000. <laughs> TikTok followers, I couldn't believe that she'd seen our videos, let alone put two and two together and knew it was me because I was commenting off my personal one. So I think like it's just helped the brand. Like honestly, I don't think the brand would nearly be what it was only for TikTok. And would you jump on that opportunity as soon as you got it? Would you yeah. send her that stuff? Oh would yeah, you link absolutely. In with her? Yeah, 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 straight away. Um, and honestly, I think that's a huge reason why we got into Brown Thomas because because I've worked in the beauty industry for the last eight years, you kind of know who like the head honchos are. And I saw that the beauty director of Brown Thomas was liking my TikToks. Oh, you're so in. So I was like, we're in. <laughs> 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 yeah. So that, you, just, you just don't know who's watching your videos. And I think we obviously do do stuff with Instagram uh, influencers and stuff as well. Instagram is huge. But for us with TikTok, like I just think you have, it's you've more opportunity. Like you don't know what videos are going to go viral. Um, where with Instagram, you kind of only have your followers that are watching you. Yes, it's, so it's more I think, predictable. Yeah, it's more predictable, but we do do both. Now we have um, a great app called Repurpose, so whatever we put up on TikTok automatically goes onto Instagram now. So you're syncing them. Yeah, so our, our Instagram Reels sometimes actually end up performing better than our TikTok Reels. So you, it's, it's, such a, it's so hard to know. Like There's yeah. no perfect formula. If there was, everyone would be going viral all the time. You literally just have to like 
just not give up. Like we go for weeks where none of our videos go viral and you're like, this is the end. But then and, and a random one goes viral. Yeah. And then a random one goes viral and you're like, oh, we're grand again. We're so back, it really we're back is. Yeah. Billy yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 It really is just ups and downs. You just kind of have to ride the And wave. that's business. Yeah, it, it? it is business. Yeah. Clina, you mentioned you launched straight into Brown Thomas. Now, there's yeah. not a lot of brands that can say that. So yeah. can I just ask you how that happened before we move on to the influencer stuff? Yeah, I think um, one of the things Brown Thomas and Ernest are really looking into is the Irish brand, the supporting Irish brands, the sustainability, the what's different. And with Seabody, we had we have a good story, but it's not just a story. And being able to back that up and like that, it's it's a story, it's different. Um, so they really understood that. And then it was like that, knowing who's who. And that's why like being involved in something like Guaranteed Irish and having those kinds of connections and events like Irish Made, the people you meet at those types of events, the networking that you can do, the you never know where somebody will go, well, I actually know somebody that you might be able to talk to. And then that one conversation at an event when you're having a cup of tea mm. ends up being a conversation with the head of beauty buying or yes. whatever it is. So like that, that was um, hard work, connections, and then presenting a very, um, I suppose, considered story. A lot of what we do is sustainability based. Yeah. Um, we do that and we come from, I suppose I've worked in European funded projects. I've worked in sustainability and circular economy uh, prior to Seabody and co-founder Helena McMahon as well. She's a scientist with an exceptional CV and then her experience as well in sustainability and circular economy. And while sustainability is now a buzzword and it's kind of everything sustainable and it's getting a badge and it's getting all these, um, it's interesting looking, I suppose, fast fashion brands maybe and how they're um, labeling that. And you'll have seen that from yeah. your perspective as well. You have to um, dig deeper. And once you dig deeper, you see what's there. So I suppose BTs, they saw yeah. more and they understood our story. So how we presented that, I suppose, um, and got that across really, really helped. Yeah, you mentioned the sustainability um, badges and yeah. I noticed a lot of fast fashion uh, brands, uh, this is digressing, but anyway, it's <laughs> kind of half relevant. Yeah. Um, they will have a conscious collection and as someone who's created a clothing brand, all I can think of as soon as I see that, you know, section on their website, mm -hmm. Um, I'm thinking, why wasn't it always conscious? Yes. Like I would never have set up a brand that wasn't conscious, that yes. wasn't mindful, that wasn't thinking about where the stuff is made. So why were you ever unconscious about what you're doing, you yeah, know? Exactly. And yet they're like delivering this, like, you know, they're expecting the red carpet to be rolled out for exactly. their sustainability coroner yeah. on their empire, you know? It's yeah. just astounding. Yeah. Lynn. But I think that's why greenwashing is a huge, big piece. Issue. It's coming to yeah. a huge, big issue. And you're going to see the ASAI and lots of even uh, the, like coming down on that yeah. really heavily. We actually just did a piece on it on the collaborations agency LinkedIn. If anyone wants to read our article yes, today. Yes, very we interesting. We did a really great article about that, about greenwashing. So um, it's hugely topical. I will have a good read of that later on. Thank you. Let me ask you <laughs> about um, some of your people. Yeah. And are you afraid to say, are you afraid to call them? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm thinking of they're, they are I'm human people, you know, yeah, they're creators. I threw you because I said content creators. <laughs> <laughs> your content creators, yeah. your people, the team, yeah. uh, that is your family, your work yeah. family. Yeah. Are there examples that really stand out in your head as that is just a brilliant example of what we can do for a brand? Yeah, my God, we have loads. We were only talking about that, Jessica and Donna are in the, are in the audience with me. So uh, we were talking about this. We work with lots of different brands. So from uh, for to Ireland, to tech, to beauty, to lifestyle, uh, you know, car brands. Um, th we also work a lot in the FMG, uh, FMCG space as well. Um, one campaign, can I give you an example of campaign? Yeah, that can we mention really brands? Well? I think we can. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Frank, Frank and Honest, uh, Musgraves. Yeah, Guaranteed, guaranteed Irish, Irish They are indeed. We <laughs> also look after them in Hunter. Um, but Frank and Honest is a really good example of a really great campaign. It was during lockdown and it was 
you know, obviously no brands could do any above the line um, sort of make TV ads or anything like that. So it's really, it was a great time for us because everyone wanted to use content creators. So we were like, yes, Yay! <laughs> keep the restrictions. Uh, only joking. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was, it was really great. Not joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Um, <laughs> but uh, we decided to do, it was, uh, we obviously, uh, uh, symbols and multiples were open and that's where people were going to hang out were in supermarkets and convenience stores so we did a massive big campaign um, and we used comedians and Killian Sunderman uh, it was did phenomenal content for us I don't know if you guys saw it yeah yeah I know, um, I know him where yeah. he walked around Dublin City and he was nearly talking to the monuments himself like Molly Malone he was like Molly I really think that you should set up an OnlyFans <laughs> it was just so it was just so it was just that is content like it was just so and what we always go back to my colleague Jessica Hopkins always always refers back to this is you know content should bring use and joy Use, are you learning something? Are you being educated? And joy, is it making you laugh? Is it memorable? And that's when content is at its back, is, is at its best. And you use it for, for your business. Yeah. You know, it's sort of ensuring that that's ticked, that you're not taking yourself too seriously. Yeah. And this is what I always say to brands. You know, we help them with the briefs. And, you know, sometimes some brands will come back and they've got every little detail. And you're like... Guys, we're not shooting a t we're we're not shooting an advert here. Yeah. It's about con and this is one take and I will share with you all. Content creators know their audience best. The end. That is what brands need to So know. how do you feel when um, give me an example of someone so I can just use someone's name for one of your content creators? Um, Not that you're singling anyone out, but someone who just works really well. A uh, big dirty fry. So okay. um, I'm sure you're all familiar with Michael Fry. Michael Fry. Yes, yeah. perfect example. Okay. Yeah. So he creates, and he's a brilliant content creator. He makes songs Funny for brands, songs, everything. Yeah. Great effort. Yeah. Multi layered with all sorts of brilliance Absolutely. in it. And he sends it back. You send it to the brand for approval. Now, what happens when it's not approved? Okay, so I'll go. To, I'll just take you back. This is a just few me steps. gossiping now, yeah, by the that's way. That's okay. <laughs> Can I take you back a few steps? Yeah. So th there's a little bit more to it than that. Okay. So what will happen is brands or an agency. Uh, we deal with uh, brands directly, agencies, advertising agencies. So there's loads. Of, there's loads of different places that we kind of plug into. Um, so they'll come to us with a brief. We'll um, send them back our briefing document because it's kind of easier to use. Okay. Um, and then we will, it, it, and, and what I always say is, it's a collaboration between the brand and the content creator. Yeah. The content creator knows their audience. They will know what works for them. Some brands want, you know, their logo top, logo bottom. And if it's too, if it's too, you will know this from your industry. And, too and, and, and Yeah, yeah. exactly. Bye -bye. People will disengage. If you don't get them within the first seven seconds, they're gone. Well, our attention span is so tiny, it's isn't seven it? Seconds. We're just it's, it's literally seven yeah. seconds now. So we will go back and forth on the brief and uh, the, our guys will come back with a concept. They will sign off on the concept and usually, you know, it, 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 it works really well. And the guys will go off and shoot it. Now, usually we allow for two rounds of feedback. Okay. And that's it, because otherwise <laughs> it just can go on and on and on. Like you're nearly producing a movie, then at the end. It just doesn't happen. So... Um, if there is tweaks or if they have feedback, which absolutely, because at the end of the day, they are paying for the content sure. as well. So I would have both my sort of hats on. I get it from the brand side, yeah. but I also understand from the content creator side. So my job- You are the negotiator. I'm a negotiator. Yeah. <laughs> Hunter by name, hunter by nature. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So that's basically. So I, I would. I I, I have one. Uh, Nicola from FBD Insurance is an old client of mine. So yes, I would always have negotiated with Nicola on certain campaigns. Brilliant. As well. Okay. So it's it, it it's always to make sure that both sides are happy. And, you know, my job is to get the best outcome for the brand and for the content of creator. Of course, and everyone wins, and it's exactly. repeat business. But always remember, the content creator knows their audience. Yeah, and that they have that tone thing. that their, their followers are following for a reason. There's a reason, and yeah. there's a reason why the brand wants to work with that content creator. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. Speak to me, Kleena, about content creators. Um, what have they done for your business? Yeah, so we've used... and. 
It's funny when you say the content creators influencer thing. Have you I used any of mine? <laughs> uh, not yet. I'll talk to you. After. Uh, the hunted. The um, hunted. <laughs> You're not getting away. <laughs> so I suppose I find it really interesting, especially that the term influencer and the amount of times that I will see content creators, talent, stars, whatever uh, term they decide to use, saying, "I hate the term influencer. I don't want to be described as an influencer." I find that really interesting because I don't see anything wrong with no. influencing. No, um, they it's are. happened since we were sitting around open fires and they were doing Beledis and Shanachai back in the day and there was a person that you went to in your community and they knew best. It's just that that community is now in your pocket. Yeah. There's no, we've evolved, technology has come along, but it's still the same idea. Um, so we have worked with uh, influencers and I suppose it's working with people what I would have said when we launched um, Seabody and it was a decision on what we were going to do it's not about just influencing we wanted to work with good influences so people who align with what we do people who have the same ideas as we do in relation to sustainability and also educators and that was something that was mentioned earlier as well it's about um, learning from the people that you follow online so somebody that um, I'm sure she wouldn't call herself an influencer but Laura Debarra yeah. Um, she's in the UK, Cork based. Uh, she's not selling me anything, but I'm learning so much from her uh, in so many different ways. So uh, the content creators we've worked with then, we actually did a piece in the month of March and we did it last year as well, where we highlighted uh, people who are working towards a more sustainable future, but they're also content creators. Mm -hmm. So Joe Linehan, absolutely incredible um if you're not following her you should be mm -hmm. and as well same for Fanula Moore and, and Aoife McNamara as well so they're people we align with they're content creators um and when we've worked with content creators and done paid pieces of activity uh, that's one way of working with them but also they want to work with us as well because I suppose like that again it comes back to networking we've met these people yeah um, they're on board with what we do and you know uh, uh, there's transactions involved but there's also building a community around it um, but we've really enjoyed it and there's there's in Ireland the standard is exceptional mm. I mean really really good and when you look at skincare professionals and people that really know the science of skin and how things work you want to work with them because they're sharing your message same as somebody like Joe Linehan with a sustainability message is doing the same thing. So, yeah, it's about kind of working alongside people that align with what you're doing. Brilliant. Yeah. When you work with them, um, Lynn was talking about that kind of editorial struggle, the negotiation yeah. in the middle. Do you, do you find when you get their brief, you're happy with it? Um, yeah, I suppose something that we've definitely learned. And like you said, uh, Lynn, it's about kind of um, collaborating. collaborating with them and they know best because uh, I've seen it where, <laughs> so we talk about biotechnology and the isolation of molecules from seaweed and uh, the average person yeah, is you're sitting them. at home going, yeah. oh, I'm so glad that this molecule <laughs> is, you know, yeah. it, it's Tell not. me I'm going to look 10 years younger and I'm in. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. You, you know, words. yeah, it's yeah. key words yeah. and it's the person talking about. So if you have somebody that there's loads of people I follow and I like them because of who they are. Yeah. And if they were to come along and all of a sudden they're going, so. Um, I'm just reading from the <laughs> script here and I'm telling you about this product mm -hmm. and it, it jars and you go, oh God, no, I don't want to hear weird. about that. Yeah. yeah. So I suppose it's what definitely uh, what we've learned and it's just about saying, this is what we have. We're very proud of it. We can stand over everything. These are the general bits that we think your audience would like hearing about. Go for it. Um, and we haven't had situations really where we've had to go back multiple times. I think mm. two is very fair where you kind of go, maybe this little change and that. Yeah, but and they're minor details. Yeah, and they're really talented people. Yeah. yeah, Really talented people. So it's just about working with them and like that, their audience you want to get to, they know them best. Of course, yeah. Yeah, and as Lynn said, you've signed them up for them. You know, yes, you've, you've, absolutely. You've partnered for a reason. Yeah. Um, Anya, do you always see a return? on influencer marketing? Um, no, not all the time, but you have to remember like not all the time it's not always for sales. So it depends okay. like why you're gifting to various influencers or doing a paid collaboration. It could be for content creation that yeah. you want to repurpose on your channels, on your yeah. TikTok, on your Instagram. You could do it for brand awareness. Purely you just want the brand name out there or you can do it for sales and you want the conversion. So it depends. I think 
like I think it's the average is a customer has to see a product seven times before they purchase before they it. it. So like yeah. it's not really fair sometimes to put that pressure on an influencer and expect them to do an ad one time and you, you get you'll see that return. I think you have to be reasonable about it. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, like there is influencers who buy all their followers and if you're paying them a big amount of money and then you're getting not even one follower from it, then that's just money down the drain. You Absolutely. Know, that kind of way. So, so there are frustrating moments yeah, in the process. Yeah, definitely. I think I'm lucky because like a lot of my friends are influencers. Kate O'Neill's there. So I get to see it from both sides, from a brand point of view and also from the influencer's point of view. And like I've been sent stuff from brands now as well because I've built up a TikTok following. Yeah. And it's interesting to see how brands speak to me. Like sometimes they can be so pushy uh, you know when expect, are you going to post about yeah, it yeah and you're kind of like hey like hey, give me a second <laughs> the worst thing you can say yeah to it can because yeah. people don't like being put under that pressure and no. that's with me with the smooth community never ever expect to get something off the basis of gifting yeah. i've gifted some if they love it if they use it great they'll they'll talk about it and if not you know that's fine but like you can't expect every time you send something that you're gonna they're gonna spend their time making a video for you or a story because people are busy, you know what I mean? And they have and to... And they're going to prioritise their yeah, paid activities. Yeah, of course, and they have to feed their families and stuff. So, yeah. you know, you think you have to be fair to influencers as well, what you're expecting when you're you're gifting them stuff. Um, so I think it depends. You need to know when you're gifting what you're looking for in return. Yes, and yours is a really young, dynamic brand and even the use of TikTok and the family involvement and everything. It's, it's really dynamic what you've done. Do you do any above the line advertising, just traditional stuff? And yeah, no, we've done some TV um, and we're right now this is a focus that we want to get more press as well because I think it's important that you tick all the boxes because yeah. there is customers that aren't on TikTok, that aren't on Instagram and I'm well, well aware of that. And we saw a great Weird return. When <laughs> <laughs> those people have, uh, are much better than me because I swear to God, I go on TikTok Disciplined for two people. minutes yeah, yeah. and it's two hours I later and I haven't done anything. Um, but no, we've been on Ireland AM, we've been on the six o'clock show and we've seen great returns from that as well. So I don't, think, I don't think you can just do one. I think you need to do everything. Yeah. Now it's a balancing game, trying to get it right. Um, and at the minute we've seen the biggest return from social media and it's the most cost effective for us as a startup business. Um, but as we grow and as we grow the team, it's definitely something that I wanna, I wanna do more of. Are there people that you'd love to work with but you just can't afford? Of course, there's so many. <laughs> um, Who would be the ideal if, if Breed from Guaranteed oh, Irish was to give you a grant today oh, <laughs> to work with your ideal? Molly May. Molly May, yeah. really? I'm obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Clina, what about you? One person? One person that you'd love to work with. Ooh, um, I'm guessing it's not going to be Molly May. <laughs> Probably not. Um, she's fab, though. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I could pick... Like, I suppose the people we've worked with already, we've kind of built relationships with. Yes. Um, I feel quite protective it's of a them in a lot game. of ways. Yeah, I think... It's a, um, so there's no one individual. I don't so she'd fire all it. hers for Molly May. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm joking. No, I actually wouldn't, because the support we've had from the Irish influencers yeah, been, like, second to none. So yeah. like, if I had to choose, I'd stick with the Irish influencers all day, every day. I will say, my husband has uh, started a, a business in the last few years, and I think he did a piece for one of the business papers on the power of influencers because as you say when you don't have the budget for other things yeah. there's a huge this is you this is for you lynn there's a huge range in terms of where you can start with a content creator isn't there Absolutely. versus the big payday i suppose and it doesn't it doesn't big budget stuff huge yeah definitely and i think that's why you know brands in the last couple of years like i've been i you know my, our other agency hunter we've been in business 15 years and we've always seen the power of content creators like we've been working with them like i was uh, the account director on buyersdorf which was nivea and you know 12 years ago we were working with bloggers so it was all yeah. you know people writing blogs so we always aligned ourselves with that and that's why i always saw the power of it hence why we set up the collaborations yeah. agency yeah but it was always a way of ensuring you know that you got the 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 message out there brand awareness and also it's tangible you know people get the products in their hand they're able to use them they're able to give their honest opinion themselves mm -hmm. and with that as you rightly say they're influencing other people yeah. to potentially purchase the product 
you know? Um, in terms of measurement, do you know, mm. you don't do the measurement of the campaign, that's up to the brand, obviously. Who well, we would just... work with them on the KPI, so okay. we'd, be, we'd be realistic. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes, you know, KPIs can be, and I would rather manage expectations and, you know, sort of under <laughs> and overachieve but rather than... But you're not than... necessarily promising any stats, no, are but you? Y to, n no, but to a certain extent, you'll know how, you know, certain content creators will really deliver yeah. and then others. And that's why it's really interesting that you were saying, you know, working with somebody who has over, say, um, we call them tier one, over 150,000 followers. But that's why we always, always, always say to brands, especially brands that are with Guaranteed Irish, you know, brands that are starting up, Small um, micro influencers are so important to brands, and I always, always, always say it. You have to pepper through. Yeah. Like a, a, what's any, a micro considered? Five. Well, like, like ten. somebody even with a, a two thousand, three, three thousand, okay. five thousand followers, people are really invested in them, and they're 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 following them for a reason. Yes. So I would always pepper through, you know, micro nano influencers into. A campaign yeah, so that's I'd what we would always that. suggest that to to brands like you know our job is for them to come back and keep working with us yeah so our job is to always be transparent and honest and give them the best possible campaign with the best possible reach because you know it's not just dublin focused it's countrywide, you know, even if they are, you know, in northern ireland included in that as well so it's yeah. so important to get a really wide reach for your content and that's why you know the beauty of the likes of TikTok now it's it could be global for of you of course so, yeah. but micro and nano influencers are super important for brands especially startups okay and I I kind of feel like the the newer accounts the micro yeah. nano mm. is that what you call them yeah um what are those categories in terms so, of the range uh, so no, so it's uh, anybody can be anybody ranging from even 1500 up to okay. 5000 you know they'd be or even and then for sort of micro from 15 to 25 but they're highly 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 engaged audience you know and I feel like they'll over deliver on everything that's Absolutely. asked of them because they yeah. are trying to grow. Yeah. And they'll so often be experts in their area. So they'll be, it'll be a niche. Like Simone Scribes is, a, is yeah. a perfect example of that. Like Simone is, uh, you know, her following is, is growing now, but she was always, you know, uh, obviously she's a skincare, you know, uh, skincare is her thing, but she was always very real, very honest, and she was always very much herself. Uh, so she's a really good example to sort of use for a brand as a case study, you yeah. know, even for skincare. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've probably You've come across her. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. She's great. So, you know, working with somebody who's not the the big influencer, I would always encourage brands to do a really good mix. Yeah. And it's an affordable so, way to get into it as absolutely. well. Absolutely. If you do but, see some But they return. would be, you know, I suppose experts in their field. So yeah. they'll really deliver on messaging and make it easy for people to understand the products, even down to your products. You know, they'll get those lovely key nuggets that you want yeah. the messaging in there, you know. Yeah. How do you feel about that, Lena? Yeah, we've actually worked with Simone. So, ah, okay. um, yeah. So I don't she, represent her. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just using her as an example. Yeah, so she's a really good example. Yeah. She's excellent like that. Yeah. She's uh, she's likable. She's herself. Yeah. Um, she's very authentic. And I, I think as well, um, a lot of them, uh, and we were, this was said earlier as well, but they have other things going on. So she also yeah. does her articles in the paper yeah. and, she, you know, yeah. um, Jo Linehan does her pieces uh, and her uh, writing as well. So there's, they have multiple things going on. Um, but I think working with, the, when we talk about the numbers, mm. every influencer started down yeah. at that 1,000. So yeah. you might say, oh, but I love their content. But that person could well be doing the same type of content. They're just not there numbers wise. Yeah. And I, the numbers don't always reflect the quality of what you're going to get from somebody. Um, and somebody who's like Anya, when you've worked in the beauty industry for eight years, and then it's kind of, okay, I've also got all of this content. You have a huge background yeah. in all of your other things. And then it's like, okay, I can do this as well. It's yes. just another string to their bow. So it's really impressive. And just to talk about that, that's really interesting yeah. that you bring that up. Uh, we work uh, we work with a, an amazing guy up the north, Nathan Anthony, bought a lunch. I'm sure some of you might have bought his air fryer book or his slow cooker book. So when we signed Nathan, he had 40,000 followers. And now he's just on this morning in the UK oh, brilliant. Uh, for the second time. And he, he has now got 3.5 million followers across Instagram and TikTok. 
it's and what's just he done phenomenal. to grow the account, Lynn? Because he's been real and he's been himself and he's sticking to what he knows. Yeah. So he's Stay not. A, he's a home cook. He created it during lockdown. He people were. He was working from home, bored a lunch, and he decided to start making videos, suggestions for lunchtime recipes, and it's just taken up. And he's actually number one bestseller in Sunday Times, and is the fifth fastest selling cookbook of all time. Wow. wow. Like, Brilliant. it's just a You're right, house. though, about the content. I need to learn from it, or you need mm. to make life a bit easier for me. Yeah. yeah. You know, so deliver it in simple language, yeah. quick, fast. Here's how dinner yeah. or lunch can look much easier. Yeah. Now I've taken something from him and now I want to be part of his community. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Absolutely. You buy into the person as You're well invested. as whatever brand they're talking yeah. about. You're invested yeah. in them. Exactly. Um, give me a quick sense of where you're all going. Anya, where is the company <coughs> going? What are the next steps? Um, so this year we hope to bring out some new product development. So we have new products in the pipeline that have taken a while to get here, but we definitely, what my goal with the smooth stick was, was I just didn't want to launch a brand with loads of different products so people get bamboozled. Yeah. I wanted to get one product, get it out there. So the ultimate goal is for everyone to have a smooth stick in their handbag like they have a hairbrush. Nice. And then once we have that uh, customer buy-in that they're loyal to the brand, then they'll buy the rest of the products that we bring out. But again, I couldn't rush that process because they've trusted in us. They love the smooth stick. I'm not going to bring out something crap and destroy the brand basically yeah, after I spent yeah, so, so long important. building it. Um, so we've been working on some really good products which are launching this year and hopefully we're going to grow the team as well because at the minute it's just me, my Who sister. Is the team? So it's me and my sister <laughs> down there at the back and then my granddad Billy obviously gets it in the social media and then my dad's there, he's our therapist and uh, mediator. Oh <laughs> stop. <laughs> So yeah, and so we he's not getting any of the fame or the glory. He's he just won't get in the TikToks. The and quiet I told killer. Him, I told him if he gets in the TikToks, you know, he can get some nice skincare bits in the yeah, post. Yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll, we'll convince him yet. We'll convince him yet. <laughs> the right proposal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Brilliant. Well, we wish you well with Thank it. Thank you we'll so be much. Watching it with great interest, Kleena. Tell us where Seabody is is off to and what are the plans? Yeah. So I suppose Ireland has been the focus. Uh, we're looking further afield now into the UK, and there's there's plans for for further afield. We went to Cosmoprof. Um, large beauty expo uh, in March as part of an Enterprise Ireland um, initiative as well so there's huge opportunities out there so we're looking at all of that um, and there's something very exciting I'm going to do that thing that influencers do when they're on their stories and they say they can't say can't, it yet can't talk about <laughs> it can't tell you yet hashtag blessed but, <laughs> <laughs> but there is something very soon it's ne next month we'll be able to, to talk about it publicly that um, it's just a slight it's, it's in the same lane we're staying in our lane but a slight uh, sideline um, that's very very exciting so that's going to be very cool and uh, yeah it's just strength from strength to strength and we'll be looking at new product development we're kind of always looking at new product development uh, as you know as, as, as well. you need to be but it yes. is wonderful to see both your brands in the likes of Brian Thomas you know it Thank feels you. really yeah. really good to see Irish brands getting the floor space there yeah. Lynn what's the future of the collaborations agency um, well we're not just uh, we actually produce our own events now so we're doing um, some amazing events Bureau de Change if anyone wants to come um, with all our comedians it's kind of uh, taking the Michael out of uh, the Eurovision it's really good fun so we're kind of producing comedy nights we're producing wellness events and also so we've just started or we've just built our own online platform and um, so we are now going global so we're going into Australia we're going into Europe and the States as well so we're gonna have a busy few years so we've lots of really exciting plans and um, yeah we're really excited for the future it's it's only building every day's a school day I've got a brilliant team that I wouldn't be able to do it without so I really appreciate that and again we work with some phenomenal content creators that I'm really proud to represent and build their careers and go on the journey with them it's so exciting so yeah Brilliant. And it's a shame she doesn't have more guys. ambition, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn Hunter, the collaborations agency, Cleena Dowling, Seabody, and Anya Kennedy, and family, the Smooth <laughs> Company. Thank you very much for Thank joining you. us today. <laughs> so, do we have any questions from the audience? What did we miss? Are you okay down there, Billy? <laughs> 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 do you use the product? All the time. <laughs> oh, you have hair, you have hair. <laughs> Hello. Uh, Hi there. Uh, Damien McCann uh, from Viatel. And the last 40 minutes have been just a new world for me. So Aww. thank you so much. Um, I just 
Googled Molly May, and I know who that is now, so I'm very uh, I'm delighted she with that. She doesn't look unlike her, actually. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so thank you. I had one for the door. So uh, no, uh, just a question for Lynn. Uh, I was just wondering, Lynn, is there any industry that you feel that influence marketing wouldn't work, or it, you know, uh, or an industry that you wouldn't work with? Um, crypto. <laughs> Cryptocurrency, uh, just depending. Like, there's there's a few... Uh, yeah, definitely. I think my job is to protect my talent and my job is always to ensure that they're aligned with the right brands and the right messaging. So we're very, very, very... Um, every brief that comes through, we sit down as a team and if I feel that it's not the right fit for any of our guys, we will always say this has come true however I don't feel it's the right move for you so I'd rather turn down a brief for because my job is a long-term strategy it's not to take money in willy-nilly I, 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 I don't believe in that I wouldn't be doing my job as a as a talent agent if I didn't highlight um, what I foresee as potential backlash for them so yeah, I take it very seriously. So there is certain um, categories that we wouldn't get involved with, for sure. Hi, Jackie, uh, Trade and Marketing Director for Macaulay Pharmacies and proud stockers of Seabody and hopefully the Smooth Company. Um, <laughs> there you go. Um, we're turning up today. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I suppose somebody we use influencers want to um, bring new brands to our attention and then we obviously use them to sell brands so we see it on a two-way level yeah. but with everything is swings and roundabouts and like you said Lynn it went from bloggers so probably behind the keyboard where people would come with the from information from a keyboard behind perspective to now with the influencer it's a very face-to-face -face market where do you see next because everything moves on and it moves on so quick, especially TikTok came out of nowhere. Yeah. And it hit everybody at such speed and people are trying to catch up with that. So what do you see as next or the next big thing have you seen coming oh through? Oh yeah, I know there's, uh, I, uh, one of the girls that works in the office, Dev Ski, and she's actually a, um, a content creator. She is just such a powerhouse. Like I feel like such a granny when I'm <laughs> sitting beside her. Like I thought I kind of had my finger on the pulse, but she just knows stuff. Um, uh, she, uh, there's so many new, platforms that are uh, developing and there's a new one that's coming down the line that will just blow everything out of the water so it's it's constantly evolving and it's constantly focusing uh, as a business especially with colleagues I know that we work with you guys it's for you guys always sort of ask the agencies and the content creators um, what's coming next. I, I, I think that's a really good way for brands yeah. to sort of know what to set up and what to focus on. Like with TikTok, I was constantly, myself and the team are con were constantly at our guys two and a half years ago, set up your TikTok, set up your TikTok. And they were like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And now there's some of them, some of our guys that are on Instagram Flying with ahead. a massive following yeah. and they're, they're not on TikTok. And I'm like, you got to get on it. And we did a, a actually, a, a, anyone here is welcome. We run workshops called the Club, uh, Club Lab. And we run them quarterly where we invite our clients and content creators to and uh, to come to um, w we do it offside and we have keynote speakers from some of the tech platforms and also our content creators and we talk about the next big thing and trends so we'll keep you informed of the next one it will be in the next two months but always ask the agencies or the content creators you know, what they feel is next because they will sort of have their finger on the pulse for you. Or the their fact kids. that you're even thinking about that yeah. as, you know, on a behalf brand. of your brand says all the right things, I think, yeah, doesn't definitely. it? Because the, the stale brands are very quick to just rely on the, yeah. we've always done this. You know, the fact that you want to be one step ahead, I think yeah. you will be as soon as that new platform lands. Yeah. Because you'll be working with the right people. Yeah. Anyone else? Yes. Amy from the Little Wax Company. Um, a question, I suppose, uh, staying in your own lane. We use uh, Instagram has worked really, really well for our business. And use, I think both Anya and Lynn mentioned there. Do you think I, I feel like I beat myself up a lot, uh, uh, beat myself up a lot about the fact Instagram has worked. Will uh, TikTok work for us? So you say you're trying to get your uh, content creators onto TikTok. Do you think, think TikTok works for all brands? 
if you think about it, TikTok has been downloaded by over billions of people. It's not going anywhere. It is a juggernaut. Look at them involved in all the sports. They're involved in rugby. They're involved in football. They are involved in everything. So I, I, I know it can be extremely daunting and it's, it, it can be overwhelming as a brand and especially if you're looking after the social media. But just go on and just you know, check it out and just see how it works and come to our next workshop. <laughs> and register but your brand name on it. Yeah. If you don't have the yeah. already. Because sometimes yeah, you'll go to handle. do that and someone else will have, yeah. you know, a variation. I just wonder where to spend your time. Yeah. Always, is every brand fitted to TikTok? I wouldn't overthink it. Honestly, yeah. I think the most interesting brands that I follow to show their day to day, like do your day life running a business, like running the little wax me. Like I would love to see that. Yeah. Like on my TikTok, loads of it's primary school teachers, and I love seeing what a primary school teacher's day looks like because mm -hmm. it's completely different to mine. Yeah. So I think like just be yourself. Literally record exactly what you're doing, and honestly, the video that you think is so boring that will end up going viral. I promise you that. So because true. The videos we spent ages editing and stuff doesn't do that well so like don't overthink it because you can't predict which one's going to go viral you just need to like not give up is the key thing because there's been so many times where we've had a quiet like few weeks and I'm like as I said earlier it's over but then one goes <laughs> up so like you just just keep going and I promise you one of them will go viral I think you'll actually find your growth in the end if you stay consistent with TikTok will be faster than Instagram yeah Definitely. Because it's so much newer. Yeah, and, and because it's much the way more the forgiving as well. So don't do the over editing thing. Yeah, you either. don't have to. And just the way up. the algorithm is, it wants to push new creators. It wants yeah. to push. So definitely, it's really good for brand awareness and for sales. Like over 50% of our sales now are going to America, which is crazy. And like we wouldn't have had that. And that's first. via TikTok? That's all from TikTok. Really? Yeah. Also, if you look at it, like Macaulay's or some of the pharmacies or Brown Thomas or. or, or you know, some of the other bigger r retailers, they'll actually have a scene on TikTok. Yeah. So they'll have point of sale material within the store, pointing you to, you know, even for books, you know, bookstores, yeah. all the rest. So that's why it is important. But as you rightly said, don't overthink it. Just you have, let go have a fun with it. With yeah. TikTok, you have to let go of it. Yeah. It's, it's unpolished, so yeah. just go for it. Anyone else? Hi, um, I'm Aoife Paul. Uh, to Lynn there about you're obviously matching brands with uh, content creators. Mm -hmm. So obviously, how do you protect a brand when, say, a content creator maybe steps out of line, says something taboo, does something that doesn't go down too well uh, with the public? Really good question. Yeah, so this question. is where, um, you know... Are fired. A, 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 yeah. <laughs> No, not quite. Um, so this is why briefing is so important and rounds of approval. So the brand has to approve everything that goes up. So if it's a paid collaboration, the brand uh, will actually have approved the content. So there's always an approval process. Do you uh, mean if they're like if, for if they're not being paid for? It, is is that what yeah, you mean? I mean like in their private life, they're done for drink driving at the weekends. Oh, okay. Well, that's really drunk serious. Driving. Sorry. I told you, you know, they're you. getting in trouble in their private life. In some yeah, shape it does happen, you know, and people make mistakes, but it's about how you come back from that. And that's something, you know, that as an agency that we would help and guide the brand because at the end of the day, we have to protect the yeah, brand, the but also yeah. to protect our talent as well. There was the, it just made me think of Mascara Gate. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. yeah. Of really course, Laura. And there's oh, yeah. probably people who go, yeah. "What is she talking about?" But on TikTok, there was Mascara Gate, and that was a huge issue. L'Oreal, I'm sure, didn't feel any pinch from that whatsoever, mm -hmm. and in fact, the product sold out everywhere. Yeah. Uh, everywhere. So uh, there's times, yeah, where how how do you? And people are human as well. Yeah. Well, there you go. Mistakes. People are human. People so, do make mistakes. Yeah. They do, of course. Yeah. yeah. But it's how Loud. you come back from that yeah. and how you, you know, is. you're not arrogant about it. That you actually, I always believe genuine in apologies. life, just being genuine, put your hands up and go, you know what? I yeah. made a mistake and move on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think we had another question here, did we? Hi, everyone. Uh, Hi. Michael O'Malley from Callow, which is a new Irish vegan leather handbag company. Oh. My question is for Anya. Um, Anya, you clearly have a very natural ability at gaining traction on social media with you know your own content, maybe not smooth company specific. Can you or do you incorporate a strategy yourself to try and create that conversion to sales or to prospective sales, or do you just kind of trust that with your own personal brand, you know, growing that so too will the the company as well? Yeah. Well, first thing I'd say. I wouldn't be very confident like on social media. I think that's why I never did. Like I never talk on my Instagram stories because I'm too nervous. I don't know why on TikTok when 
it first came out, I felt like none of my friends will see this, so I'll just yeah. go for it. Um, and that's kind of why I honestly started doing TikTok originally, because I felt that I'd missed the kind of Instagram train. So I was like, when TikTok came out, I was like, I need to be fast on this or it's going to move on. Um, so that's what I did. And then I suppose what you're saying about the personal brand, it is something that I, I'm trying to balance at the minute. Do I post content on the smooth company TikTok or do I post content on my own TikTok? Because people like to see both. Like say coming here today, I was like, will I post that on the smooth company <laughs> or TikTok or I post it on my own personal TikTok? Uh, and it's kind of a balancing act because you don't know which one it's gonna perform better on. Um, what I found is the content with my granddad does better on my personal TikTok and then brand content kind of does better on the smooth company one. Um, off the back of one of our TikToks going really viral in America. A lot of our followers now are actually American. So I have to be conscious of that when I'm putting content up that if it's something to do with, I don't know, an event in Dublin, they won't, it won't really resonate with them. So they'll just scroll past where most of my following on my own personal TikTok is Irish. So I'll post that on mine. So it is annoying because I'm trying to I have to work double hard. I have to do double the content because um, I was thinking if I had done it all in one, I'd have nearly 100,000 followers now, which is annoying, but at the same time, I think it's, it's uh, I'm playing it more safe, because I'm trying to build my own brand, and then also I'm building the Smooth Company brand, so it can stand without me in a few years' time. Um, so, yeah. I think that's it, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. I think I'll hand you back to Breed. Thanks so much. That was fantastic, wasn't it? <laughs> the insight into it. First of all, thanks to Anna for pulling all that information out. <laughs> and we think we know about influencer marketing, but we actually know. Well, I feel I know absolutely nothing after all of that. So well done. I think it was really insightful. You're an amazing powerhouse. Women, you're just, <laughs> I admire you. Well done, everybody. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this second special episode of the Guaranteed Irish Business Podcast, live from the Stella Theatre. Thank you to our guest host, Anna Daly, and our fantastic panel, Anya Kennedy, Cleanna Dowling, and Lynn Hunter. If you haven't already, be sure to check out our live episode from last week with guest host Bernard Jackman and his panel of guests, Senny Now, Pope Jack Molloy, and Ross Byrne to discuss the business of sport. Thank you as always for listening, and be sure to like the episode and subscribe wherever you are listening. The Guaranteed Irish business podcast sponsored by fbd insurance ireland's largest homegrown insurer support it's what we do